Hey, Mr. Crane here. So uh, I'm making this video in response to the numerous amount of requests and emails I received, phone calls I received while I was in the middle of class. And um, so I'm making this video out to support you. Now, I'm kind of disappointed in that I assumed, and maybe that was bad of me to assume something, but I assumed that I gave quite a lot of material in order for you to be able to be successful on the Clocks and Rocks assignment. So I'm going to give you all of the locations where I've given you all the material you needed to be able to complete Clocks and Rocks, even though we hadn't talked about Half-Lives. And I'm going to add Half-Lives in. My, my plan was to put Half-Lives in after you attempted the assignment. But I knew that I gave enough information for you to be able to be successful in the assignment, as well as the questions gave all of the information you needed to be able to answer them. And when I show you this, hopefully it will make you have a light bulb pop in and go, oh, now I see what he means. But let me start off by going back through several of the videos that I've already provided for you through Brain Pop, as well as pieces of information I gave you and things that I typed up. Now, when I put something in the assignments, I expect you to go through them and watch the videos. I expect you to read the material before you attempt an assignment. And several of you haven't done that. So I'm going to show you. So here's the first Brain Pop video that I gave you for the week. This was like Monday, geologic time. And I'm going to play this video right from the location that gives you their first piece of information to be successful in Clocks and Rocks. For Devin, rock layers from that time were first studied. Rock layers. Talks about that right now. This is for the entire timeline. It's a branch of geology called stratigraphy. Stratigraphy. It's a study of rock layers and the fossils contained inside them. Study of rock layers and the fossils inside them. A rock layer, or stratum, is probably older than the layers above it and younger than the layers below it. He just said the very first part of the law of superposition. He said... In stratigraphy, the rock layers that are below are older than the rock layers above them. In fact, this little image right here that's on the Brain Pop video shows that this lower level is 540 million years ago. This layer up here that shows in the Ordovician is 450 million years ago. And a lot of you have focused on the fact that a lot of you have focused on the fact that. You wanted to know the layer names, and I never said, give me the layer names. I said, give me the age of the rock layers based on the information you were given. Therefore, you didn't have, need any more information in Clocks and Rocks other than the information that was inside that assignment. And I'll show you exactly what I mean in just a little bit. Let's continue on with this little piece. By studying the different layers, scientists can get a good idea of how animals evolve and how the rock composition of an area has changed over time. Right, and they can also put everything into an order. Stratigraphy isn't perfect, though. Over millions of years, rock can break, bend, erode, and shift. To get a more complete picture of the conditions on our planet, scientists compare the strata from one area of the Earth to another. They also employ radiometric data, which uses radioactive isotopes to date objects. All right, so this is your first mention of something that is about half lives. Radiometric dating or carbon dating, as it will be found, you'll learn that in a couple of days, is looking at a fossil, looking at a sample of organic material, basically and dating it based on the radioactive isotopes. And we've covered isotopes already. We covered it back when we talked about elements. I said that an isotope is the same element with different numbers of neutrons. Therefore, it's a heavier element, and it usually is radioactive. It gives off some sort of alpha, beta, gamma particle based on what, what type of element it is. But it decays. It breaks down at a specific rate. Now, you haven't learned that part yet. We're going to learn that soon. But this is right here, and for this week's material, is the first time we talked about half-lives. And even though they didn't say the word half-life, they 
they are talking about radioactive dating, which is absolute dating based on how much of a sample is still in a rock. As opposed to the geologic timeline for relative dates, radiometric dating gives an absolute I just said that. All right, we're going to look at the second piece of information given to you on dating of animals. And this was in the fossil video for Brain Pop. And I paused it. You can see where I'm at. It's about two minutes in on a roughly three and a half minute video. All right, he said about fossil record. He said we get, uh, looking at this particular layers of rock, let's see if I can find that image. Talk about the layers of rock. You can date how old a rock is based on where the fossils fall into the fossil record. So, and he didn't talk about bending or folding the rock and changing its position, but he did say that you could get a relative date instead of an absolute date. Radiometric dating or half-life dating is the absolute date. All right, so I'm going to give you the third piece of information that um, covers it. So, inside the assignment itself. Inside the assignment itself, it says right here, it says, put the layers in order from oldest to youngest. How do you know? Well, back, um, back here, inside our assignments, I made something called the Clocks and Rocks and the Law of Superposition. We'll click on this. It was just a little piece of information to help you. And I said, think about the law of superposition and what it means to you. Now, you guys know all, uh, I like Superman a lot, but I put baby Superman above old Superman. And it was just a clever way to talk about the law of superposition, meaning that the oldest layers of the rocks are below the youngest layers of the rocks. The law of superposition. Oh, I said it right here. The youngest layers of the rocks are located on top. The oldest rock layers are located on the bottom. Now, that, that's in a perfect world. So if you look at these layers right here, I have oldest layers on the bottom, youngest layers on the top in a perfect world. Sometimes, though, a younger layer from the magma chamber flows up and cuts across the older layers. They cut through the youngest layers above. So you see this rock that's cut across. You see this rock that's cut across here. And it started to weather, and it's exposed it. It's a more resistant rock, so it's show it's sticking out from all the other rocks. And it shows right here, this here's these layers of rock that were all perfect before, but then this magma chamber cut through, burned and cut through the rock layers, and then deposited a layer here, making this the youngest layer up to this point. Then this rock layer here was deposited on top of it. So this would be the oldest layer, the next oldest layer. And then this rock came up. That would be the next youngest layer. And then finally these were put on top of this rock layer, making these youngest even more. Or maybe this layer was already there <clears throat> and this bubbled up through here and it never went any higher than here. And this became this location. We don't know that information. Looking at this image right here, it says, let's, as a class, try to date the age of these rocks from the oldest to the youngest. So if I'm looking at this whole thing, these layers, I can see layers down here on the side, layers right here, and they, they continue across right here. This is the oldest layer. This one right here and this one way over here, the same layer. Then the next oldest layer, and then it gets younger and younger as we go up. So the youngest layer here, at the point before this magma chamber came into, into here, this would have been the youngest layer. But this magma chamber, like under Yellowstone National Park, 
this magma chamber bubbles up through here and cuts across all of these layers. You can see them cutting across all these layers. These layers extend across, so I know that they were here first. Then this cut across and made this dike right here. This is what this is called, a dike. This is called a dike. That when, it, when a dike comes up and flows horizontal, it's called a seal. It cuts across this and flows across and cuts across, making this the youngest layer of all. And then this, dot, this, this magma chamber over here has cooled and solidified and made this batholith over here. And this batholith, I'll give you an example. <clears throat> if you've ever gone to Yosemite National Park and you see El Capitan or Half Dome, that mountain that all the rock climbers climb, or Devil's Tower in Wyoming, this is a batholith. It is a magma chamber that has cooled down and solidified. So all of this used to be magma at one time, but it solidified and is now hard rock, igneous rock. All right. So I've given you all the information you needed to be able to be successful on this assignment. So now let's look at this assignment. Oh, look at there. There is a dike cutting across. So it says put the layers in, in order from oldest to youngest. A lot of you ask me. I don't know, or you stated, I don't know the names of these rock layers. How can I do this assignment? Does the, does the assignment ask you to name the rock layers? No. It says, put the layers in order of oldest to youngest. How do you know? Well, I have the layers right there. This is layer six. This is layer five. This is layer four. This is layer three. This is layer two. This is layer one. And we'll call this one right here layer seven. This, this dike that's going up and down, layer 7. Then I have all of these fossils that are inside these rocks. You don't have to know the name of the fossils. It doesn't ask you to know the name of the fossils. But it says, <clears throat> so your first question should have been, put the, put the layers in order from oldest to youngest. So you if you think this is the oldest, then you put that one oldest to youngest. So you would have gone 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, if you believe it's that way. If you believe the oldest is down here, then you would have done it the opposite way. One, two, three, four, five, six. <clears throat> but don't forget this guy here. Is this guy older or younger? I said that in the video just a few seconds ago. So you go back and you figure out what I said. It says the oldest and youngest layer has a rock that has a mineral with a half-life of 500 million years. So this layer here, the oldest layer and the youngest layer, whichever one you think that is, both have a mineral in it that has a half-life of 500 million years. So if 100% of the mineral was still here, that rock layer would be 500 million years. And it gives me a symbol showing me this layer here and this layer here on the bottom. It has a mineral in it that's 500 million years. That's 100% of the mineral. But it doesn't say that there's 100% of the mineral in those layers. If there were 100%, we would know that these two layers would be 500 million years. It says layer one. Where's layer one? Oh my goodness, layer one is right here on the bottom. Layer one, half of the radioactive element, half of this element, is left from its beginning amount. So it started off with 100%, now it's half of that amount. So, half of 500 million years is, pause for effect, half of 500 is, half of 50 is 25, 250 million years. So, it says layer 1, right here, layer 1 of the radioactive element is left. So, half of 500 is that answer. Next layer says layer six up here. One quarter, which is one fourth. One quarter is one fourth, or one over 25, whatever you want to say, one fourth. Those are all, if I had a dollar and I had one fourth of that, broke a dollar into quarters, I have four quarters, one quarter of it would be 25 cents, right? So if I said that that was um, 500 million years, half of half of that would be 250 million years, and a quarter of that would be 125. 
So, layer six, this layer right up here, half or, or it says one quarter or two half lives. So, this is one half life. This is two half lives. How old is this layer here? So, half of 500 is 250. One quarter of 500 is 125. Or half of 250, the answer you got for this one down here. Half of 250 is 125. Did not ask you to name the layer names. Asked you to date and age the layer names. How long did the trilobite, this little symbol here, which is one right here, and there's one up here. How old did the trilobite exist on Earth according to these records? So the oldest layer where the trilobite exists in this sample this rock sample here, this whole huge stratigraphy sample, is how old? Well, the oldest one we found from this one right here, um, this number three, says layer one, half of the radioactive element, so half of 500 is 250 million years. What's the answer for this guy here? How old is the oldest trilobite? 250 million years. That's the whole assignment. And today's assignment is a quiz over this exact piece of information. So yesterday I gave you all the information. Now you have a video over this information. You need to go and make sure that you understand this. I'm going to give you one more piece of information today. And it is radioactive isotopes. This is radiometric dating. An isotope is an el the same element with different numbers of neutrons. So carbon-12 and carbon-14. Carbon-12 is naturally found. It has six protons, six electrons. Carbon-14 has six protons, six electrons, but it has more neutrons. It has, instead of six neutrons, it has, I think it's eight plus six is 14. So it has eight. All right, so carbon-14. Radioactive elements are unstable. They decay and change into different elements over time. Not all elements are radioactive. These that are listed below are the most useful for geologic dating of fossils. So we use carbon-14, which has a half-life of 5,730 years, 5,730 years. What is a half-life? Stuff will break down into half of its original mass in a predictable time. The half-life of a radioactive element is the amount of time required for one half of a sample of a radioactive element to decay. Each radioactive element has its own half-life. Each element decays into a new element. For instance, I think it's cesium. Cesium decays into thorium. So, no, I didn't make that name up. Each element's half-life is completed in a predictable time. It's constant. It's like a clock. Hence the clocks in a rock assignment. It's like a clock. It is absolute. It's not relative. Like just trying to guess the age of rocks based on its position. You have seen that radioactive decay is not a linear process. It is, it is, however, predictable. We refer to the rate at which radioactive isotopes decay as its half-life. All right, so I'm going to go over something in just a second. While all isotopes decay in the same manner, their half-lives are not all the same. Isotopes with long half-lives, like uranium-238 and potassium-40, have a half one million two hundred. I'm sorry, one billion two hundred sixty million years can be used to date rocks. Now these are rocks that don't have organic material in them. Okay, so this is different. Carbon dating is used to date things that have radi um, sorry organic material. So fossils, things that have lived before, would have organic material possibly still attached to it, and you can determine the age of living things using carbon dating. But carbon, if you looked at a while ago, it said 5,730 years. So in an, an amount of time, about 20,000 years is about as effective as carbon dating can be over time. So in order to date something 
older than that, say the rocks where dinosaurs might have existed, you would have to use something like uranium or potassium-40 to date it because a billion years is the half-life for these guys. It is an extreme length of... Uh, it is the extreme length of their half-lives that has allowed us to figure out the age of these uh, rocks on Earth. So some isotopes have half-lives for thousands of years and others have half-lives so short that they barely exist long enough to be identified. All right, let's look at this little sample real quick. So we're talking about carbon-14. This is 100% of the sample of carbon-14. This grid represents the quantity of carbon-14. Each time you click, one half will go away. So one half of it. So right now it's 100%. In the next slide, one half life has expired. I have exactly 50% of my original sample is left. And now I have 50% of a new sample. Okay. And that new sample is nitrogen 14. So it, once this decays, it becomes a new element. The new sample is a new element. And so when carbon-14 decays or goes through its half-life, the new element is nitrogen-14. So looking at this, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight grids for carbon-14. Half of that life again, so right now we're at 50%, half of that would be another, would be 25%. So this guy's going to lose 25%, this guy's going to gain 25%. So now I have four. So this is my second half-life now. So now two half-lives have gone and the, and the, for a total of 11,460 years. So 5,730. And second half-life would be 11,460. Half of that 14 is now, now Thor, I'm sorry, now this nitrogen 14 is increased by 75%. See that? that It's gained that 25% right here that this carbon-14 lost, and we've added it to here. What do you expect to happen next? Well, I have four spaces. If I go through a third half-life for carbon-14, these two are going to go away, and they're going to be added to this guy over here. Let's see if we we're right. Oh, we're right. Now I have three half-lives, and three half-lives, 17,000... 190 years has a pass through, so carbon-14 has now been shown to be accurate for at least up to 7, 17,190. Um, Twelve, we're at, we're at half of 25 now, so half of 25 is 12.5. We add that 25 to that, or that 12.5 to the 75, and we get 87.5 percent of this nitrogen-14 now exists. Only 12.5% uh, of this mineral possess, exists, and so on. So if I did it one more time, we did four half-lives. Half of 12.5 would be 6.25, and that would be added over to this side over here, the 87.5. 6.25, we'd get somewhere in the neighborhood of, what, 90, 93.75 or something like that, and we would be left with one cube over here. And that's carbon dating. The de decay of carbon dating is, is not a linear line. It's a curved line. But we're looking at the sample, 100% of the sample, 50% of the sample. And we're saying this is going down by half and going down by half again and going down by half again. Finally here, it, that's the way it works. So we've we could keep going halves and figure out that Right here, we're at 17,000. If we continued going halves and add that 5,000,